Hi, we're Jerry and Diana. In September, we traveled from Seattle, Washington to Bethesda, Maryland to the National Institutes of Health, NIH, for kidney surgery. Diana had a robotic partial nephrectomy on her right kidney. So I had medical tests that I wanted to tell you about. I had a renogram, which here they have to drink 24 ounces of water, and then they have to go to the bathroom, and then they lay you down on a table and get an IV started, and they had a hard time doing mine. Three tries, I ended up with it in the back of my hand. Then they inject you with a tracer, and then I was underneath a big x-ray machine that sandwiched over me, and I had to lay there for about 25 minutes. About midway, they added more tracer. So the renogram measures the function of my kidneys, and you can actually see on the renogram test the tracer go from your kidneys through your ure ureter into your bladder. So you can see that it's working. It's kind of cool. They had me get up and go to the bathroom at the end and then wait while they asked the doctor if he needed to finish the test with Lasix, which I think would have put me there for another hour while they waited for the rest of the tracer to clear. I guess Lasix is a diuretic. The doctor said, no, I cleared enough tracer, it's okay. So I was able to get up and be done. So if you have that test, you should know that you will have a full bladder a couple times and that you will have the gamma ray tracer, I think it is. You'll have the tracer in your system. So you can want to drink lots of fluids and clear it out afterwards. And then today, today is the day I checked in at the hospital. It's Thursday, my surgery is on Friday. Then I was ordered to have a CTA which is uh, computer tomography and geography. Now this was for my brain. So it involves having an IV placed, which needs to be a 20 gauge, not a 22, having a 20 IV placed, then laying down, going into a CT machine. They push a bunch of contrast all at once. You can really feel it like you really gotta pee. And then the CT scans again, and then come off the CT. So that one is pretty normal, except for you really do need to have the big gauge because they are gonna push tons and tons of contrast. And so that one, they'll look at that for the results. They'll find out um, how all the blood vessels are in my brain. It's almost time, 6 a.m morning of my surgery. Don't I look lovely from sleeping? Anyway, I'm getting ready to go back and go to surgery. I'm having a partial nephrectomy today on my right kidney. They're gonna get the tumors off. You'll meet the team. The team will come down. We'll all make sure this is the plan that we're doing. We'll go back there. Once we get in the room, we'll have you move over. You hook up the monitors. Monitors for your heart, blood pressure cuff, and then the little thing that's on your finger tells us how well you get oxygen to your body. Change out your mask, give you that beach ball smelling plastic mask, and then drift you off to sleep. Okay. Once you're asleep, that's when we'll put the breathing tube in there, and then we'll get you all set up from there. We'll suction your stomach out just to make sure you don't have any of that mm -hmm. acid or anything else left in there too. Because that can help contribute to you being sick to your stomach as well. Oh, so okay. we just kind of keep that in there and just turn it off suction, and then as we're waking you up, we turn it back on suction and get out anything that's been in there. Brilliant. Mm -hmm. um, also put a temperature probe down there so we can measure your core temperature. Oh, yeah. And then once you're asleep, that's when we'll start. we we'll put the other lines in you that we need mm -hmm. on there too. They'll put the A line in there to monitor your blood pressure with every beat of your heart. That's also the one that they'll draw blood off of if they need to afterwards. Mm -hmm. It's also the first one that comes out because I do want that one out. Mm -hmm. and so we'll get that one in there. So if you go on, they usually call you right after we get that set up, right before the robot gets docked. Okay. Uh, you know, the reason why they say it takes long, so long to do is because she's in the room about an hour before they actually even get started. So it's just positioning, getting the robot and everything. Get the robot started, they'll get going on there, uh, get down through all the tissue that they need to, isolate where the tumors are, and start from there. Okay. So okay. if they do decide to clamp, uh -huh. we give you some extra medicine to keep the kidneys healthy mm -hmm. while it's clamped. They're only allowed to clamp for so long before they have to release the clamp on right. there. We keep a running clock on our anesthesia machine and the circulating nurse keeps a running clock on hers. And we tell him every 10 minutes overhead what's going on so that he has to. 
And so that's basically, he clamps so that he doesn't have a lot of blood loss. Right. If he just thinks it's near the artery, the renal artery, that's when he'll clamp. We have blood already that you'd be typing screen for anyway. Yeah. You'll be back in the room on there in case we need it. Uh, as we're waking up, like I said, we'll take that we'll suction your stomach out on there and then we'll get you waking up, making sure you're breathing on your own. Uh, once we get that out, you may, we'll tell you to take a nice deep breath as we're taking it out. People cough, that's what happens on there because you just had this in there for a while. Sometimes sore throat afterwards, if you remember from your other surgeries. It's not because we were mean to you in there, it's just that you had something stuck in between your vocal cords for four to six hours. Mm -hmm. And so it can be just a little sore. So no karaoke for the next couple of days. We're there, they will call you usually periodically a couple times during the case and towards the end of the case when the dog wants to come. Okay. Hi friends. It's 6 a.m. Day one, the day after my surgery. Boy, is my face puffy. I didn't get to film the day of my surgery. I was too out of it. Probably still maybe too out of it. It went a little rougher than I expected. It was supposed to start at 8.30, but it actually started at 10, because they were running behind. Yeah, they were just positioning me. It took forever. And then the surgery took a long time. The tumor on the top of my kidney was pretty standard, but the tumor on the bottom of my kidney was a lot of drama. I had to clamp the kidney. So that's like a whole big countdown. I was intubated for a long time, so my throat's really sore. It was serious hard work to get the tumor on the bottom. I was saying they used to clamp the countdown the time. You can only do it for 30 minutes. The clamp, though, keeps urine and blood from flowing through the kidney so they can work with it. I never really woke up in PACU. PACU is where you're supposed to, like, get awake and they take you up to the floor, but I just didn't really wake up. I came out with a device. I have a, a drain with suction, so that looks like a Christmas ornament with blood flowing into that. And then for whatever reason, it's leaking around the entrance. And so I keep getting, my bandage isn't holding, I'm getting wet. And then when they transferred me from the gurney to my bed in my room, they knocked the second, I have a Foley catheter and then I have a, a stent and they knocked it loose and it was spraying the whole bed with urine which is kind of funny, but it wasn't because my nurse got really stressed out. She didn't really want her patient straight out of surgery, covered in urine, I think. So then straight out of surgery, I had to stand up so they could remake my bed. So I'm going to say I stood up on day zero. I have subcutaneous emphysema, but it's pretty mild. I'm on an IV. It's got uh, Tylenol and a lactated ringer. I've had a couple oxys for pain. I'm pretty sore. I think some of it's the subcutaneous emphysema and some of it's just from being in position so long. My surgery didn't start till 10. I got out about 4.30, left PACU at six because they were closing up for the night. And then I was situated and we had to do the whole pee all over my bed thing. And so I didn't get situated in bed until about 9 p.m. So poor Jerry, he waited till I told him I felt okay for him to leave, to go back to the lodge to sleep. That was like one o'clock in the morning, midnight or something. Boy, can you, can you see the air in my face? Also, I'm full of fluids, right? Because I've got the, the lactated ringer. I'll show you. This machine's been making that noise all night. To me, it sounds like a frog croaking. So I can tell I'm gonna need to get up and do some laps. And that's gonna be rough because I have three drains. The Christmas ornament, the Foley catheter, and the stent. So it's gonna be hard to move me. Plus I have the uh, IV pool 
So it's going to take an act of Congress. I'm in Washington, D.C. Get it? Act of Congress? Oh, and my oxygen. I forgot about my oxygen. Where'd it go? Oh, no. It doesn't do me a lot of good on my head. Isn't that a look? That's a look. Fault our stars. It's the fault our stars look. And I think a phlebotomy came and took my blood. I have been very high maintenance. I promised them I'd be low maintenance. And I lied. I said I didn't need ICU. And then I just spilled urine everywhere and needed tons of attention. I've been the drama queen. Procedure where they took part of my kidney trying to get out the part that has the cancer on it.